All right, good evening. My name is Wesahana Pearson, and I'm recording right now for Black Asia Magazine. I'm talking to a gentleman that I recently met who's doing some very important things with young people, taking them abroad and acquainting them with experiences that he himself had. So let's get into the interview and I'm gonna let you take it away. So first for the site, can you tell us your name and introduce yourself? Hello everyone, uh, my name is Danny Evans. Um, I'm originally from Atlanta, Georgia. I am the CEO and founder of Millennium Unboys. Uh, so basically Millennium Unboys, I, I had a, a vision um, in two, 2012. Um, I was in China at the time and I was at a bookstore. Uh, I was buying a Chinese book because I wanted to study Chinese. So a little girl came up to me and she touched me and said, well, I think, I think you need to go to the doctor. She was speaking in Chinese um, and I, I, you know, I didn't know what to say. It was kind of weird. So she grabbed me and she tried to walk me out of the library because she thought I was Chinese. She has never seen a foreigner before. So her mom came and said, no, 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 no. He's a foreigner. She was like, oh, I never, I never met a foreigner in my life. So she literally thought I was ill and that I needed to go see a doctor because my skin was black. So yeah. I had to explain to her what after you know what black is being black is all about, especially in America, because her mom thought I was from Africa as well. So she clearly didn't understand. So when I had when I returned back to the States, you know, that was constantly on my mind. And then I just created Millennium Envoys because I wanted to bring the students that can connect with the children like her age to China, uh, whether it's through the arts, language, sports, whatever it may be. So through Millennium Envoys, you know, we prepare the youth, young professionals to do education and business exchanges abroad. Uh, we also provide like cross-cultural communication training, language training. I do speak Mandarin, Portuguese, and Japanese, um, so I'm trilingual. Uh, what I am presenting to the youth and young professionals, I'm also doing it for myself. Uh, I do have a background in nonprofit and government. So I did work for the United States Senate uh, as a congressional staffer. Um, I've also uh, worked uh, as a special assistant for Ambassador Robin Sanders. What she does more with Africa um, but it still gives me the skills and the knowledge uh, to assist the youth um, in America uh, and also young professionals. Excellent. You've got a very lengthy resume and it's obvious that you're extremely accomplished. Uh, I want to know a little bit more about Millennium Envoys and what kind of young people, the profile of young people that you target. But before that, uh, we do like to understand the stories and the backgrounds of the people that we interview, the Black people who are living here in Asia. Um, you said you're from Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, how did you come to be in China in the first place? What Do you want to go into a little bit about what brought you uh, to have the mindset where you even want to go abroad? What influenced you to become a traveler in the first place and what brought you to China? So um, I always had an interest in Asia. Uh, when I was a kid, I did watch a lot of anime and I watched a lot of Chinese Kung Fu movies. So the opportunity didn't present itself for me to go to China until I was in college. So when I was in Atlanta, um, I was in a predominantly African-American community, and uh, we really didn't focus on opportunities abroad. In high school, uh, even in middle school, like our counselors and teachers never presented any type of um, avenue for us to go abroad. So it basically started when I went to college at Morgan State University, which is an HBCU okay. uh, in Baltimore, Maryland. Um, and I was a senior at the time and my global marketing professor, uh, professor, Hi and Hugh, I will never forget it. Um, I did a, I did a project on uh, global marketing and she began to talk to me about 
how China is going to be the biggest market in the world. And this was in 2012. So this is when China was on the rise. And she was just saying that you should speak Mandarin. You should try to study it. So I, I consider myself a good student. So I took her advice and I took Chinese classes at Morgan State University and they had it. Took it for a year. I was actually the worst student in the class, but my professor saw the potential in me because I worked very diligently. And she said, why not, why not try this opportunity that I have for you graduating? Take a chance, you look like a go-getter. How about you uh, apply for World Teach? So World Teach was a program created by Harvard University uh, they selected 45 uh, recent graduates uh, to basically teach English abroad. So uh, they had us in Hunan, China, okay. uh, which is in the middle part of China. Um, it's not like your big city, Shanghai, Beijing. Uh, so when I, when I arrived, everybody was surprised to see me. Uh, so, you know, I took that opportunity uh, I didn't know what to expect. It was my first time ever being abroad. I did study Chinese, so I had a little knowledge, but I didn't have any exposure to the culture. Uh, so when I got there, I learned from my counterparts. So, you know, a lot of them went to Georgetown, Harvard, you know, uh, Pitt. So I was only African-American male and from HBCU. So this was all new to me. Um, so when I did this program, I was sent to a school in the middle of the city and I connected it with the students. So they were all high school students. I always had the skill of being a people person and adapting to certain situations. And I spoke Chinese. And the most important thing was my professor, both of my professors, my Chinese and also my global, mar global marketing professor came visit me. So that gave me a lot of face. So with China, face is more about who you are, your reputation as a person. So that really led to a closer relationship that I have with the school and the students. Okay. So I want to open up one thing that you said. You were the only black male, young black man who was there. And it seems like you kind of just jumped in at the deep end of the pool, so to speak. For other young black men who are considering traveling abroad going out of the country or doing something similar, what would you tell them as far as what they need to be prepared for, what they can expect? Because it seems like you dealt with it quite effectively and it seems like you didn't experience too much culture shock, but what would you tell them that they need to be ready for when they jump into a situation like that? So first they need to do some research on the country. So. If the first language is not English and it's like, let's say Mandarin, if you want to go to China, I would strongly suggest that you study um, the native language um, and also understand the culture before you go there. So try to connect with people in your um, around your community or even online on that space um, to understand the culture and uh, develop friendships that can prepare you to go to, to go abroad. Um, in addition to that, uh, you can find resources through, you know, through different universities and also uh, with Millennium Envoys, uh, I would say, uh, you know, we can help you prepare uh, with your transition going abroad and just have an open mind, be open to different things, be ready to be uncomfortable you will be put into uncomfortable situations because, um, you know, from my experience being in Asia, they don't necessarily understand what racism is all about, cultural appropriation. So you gotta, you need to be able to understand that uh, in a manner that would not be, I, I would say too sensitive. So you have to learn how to be calm and know how to communicate with people effectively to get your point across, whether it's through English or even with their uh, native language. Right, you're 100% right about that. I have, having experience with Asia, I've seen times where people do things that will be blatantly racist in the United States and it just, it wouldn't happen because people know better. But 
living out here in Asia, you see people do certain things that maybe you would call that cultural appropriation. But for them, they don't understand that maybe it's offensive or it's uh, not acceptable for them to do that. So I definitely agree with you on that one. Uh, as far as personality types, is there a particular kind of person that you would say is more suited to entering into this kind of program? Or is it just like in general for anybody? So uh, for the program, it's generally for anybody. Um, but I would say if you do go abroad, you must be spontaneous. Uh, you know, you want to try to be open to new things uh, and be adventurous, go out, experience different things. Do not just only go to the tourist areas. Don't just hang around people who look like you. You want to you want to try to um, be a people person and engage with the community. Um, I know for myself, I actually live with a Chinese family, uh, and that was that helped me become very effective. And I had to be outgoing. You you must be outgoing uh, in a way that's culturally sensitive. You want to be outgoing to a point where you can talk to people because more than likely they will be afraid to talk to you. Uh, especially if you're, you know, I'm 6'2", 220, and I played, I played football in college too. So a lot of people were afraid to even just look at me. So I, I, I you know, they, they thought I was handsome too, don't get me wrong, but um, they were afraid to approach me to just have a conversation because of my built. And I was black because um, they, they do have a lot of um, stereotypes about, you know, black people especially if they're big and tall and male. All right. Specifically, what are some of the things you did to break the ice in situations where someone might be looking at you like they're afraid of you or intimidated by you or when someone was just too shy to speak to you? So, um, you know, I had the advantage of speaking uh, Mandarin Chinese. So, you know, I will try to say hi, at least start with a hi and see where it goes. I know sometimes if it's little kids, I will give them like some candy, like American candy or a little gift because gift giving is very big in China. And that's how you build guanxi relationships. Okay. Relationships is very important, especially in China. Uh, and also be inviting. So always have a smile on your face. I know every day you're not gonna be happy, but at least try to show that you're approachable and communicate with the people, whether if, whether if they're being what whether they're not being cultural culturally sensitive to you, because they may say things that may not be cool, but they necessarily don't know. So you have to be a good judgment of character of people, because mm. um, you have people who do it to make fun of you, and then you have others who just don't know. So try to like teach, be a teacher. You and you have to teach people your culture. So that's what I did. I. I went out knowing that maybe I have to be a teacher to everyone, not just for my students, but for the community as well. Excellent answer. Thank you for sharing that with us. Um, very briefly, besides China, what other places have you visited or been to in the past? So in the past, um, I have been to Japan, South Korea, South Africa, Ghana, Canada, Mexico, uh, and, and other places. Uh, I would say my, my favorite place is Tokyo. Um, it was clean, very clean. People were very um, approachable, um, polite. And it's a mixture of modern and traditional architecture. So the scenery is very nice. Um, so I, I would suggest that everybody goes to Tokyo. Excellent, okay, all right. Now, moving forward, I'd like to know a little bit more about Millennium Envoys. Um, you've already touched on this pretty quite extensively, but exactly what age group of young people are you looking for? Uh, how does someone apply to be a part of one of your programs? And when they go into a program, you already said what you can get. Um, exactly what are they going to be doing when they enter into one of your programs? Okay, so 
in order to be a part of Millennium Envoys, all you have to do is go to our website uh, or you can just send me an email. So we have a, a form that you can fill out and you will be directly in contact with me. Okay. Um, so for the programs that we have, um, specifically for the youth, um, there are a number of programs, I would say. Uh, I know recently uh, we had a forum, a free forum for high school students and middle school uh, to be exposed to international professionals, uh, study abroad and language, for, like free study abroad language opportunities, and also learning from others about their experiences abroad. So we have that and we can um, put you in contact with mentors um, who may share the similar interests as you and who are who are successful at what they do and that can probably put you in the same position they are in the future. Also in the future, you know, COVID is right now, but in the past I have I have taken like last in 2019, I have taken 20 students to China um, through a program that I went uh, through a program I partnered with with Baltimore Shaman Sister Cities Committee, um, where I work with Arella Leo, um, and I send my condolences to her. She just recently passed away. Uh, she was the treasurer there, and also uh, the chair, uh, Cindy Leo, uh, which they've done a great job. They have a partnership with um, Shaman. Uh, which is actually a city that's an, uh, right across the street, I would say, uh, to Taiwan. Right. Uh, so yeah. um, I took 20 students. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I took I took 20 students to China. Uh, I'm part of a youth ambassadors program. Not only did they go to China, um, but they had a chance to visit the State Department um, and also the Small Business Administration. And then we had... Um, an opportunity for them to go to the NBC in Beijing to meet with foreign service officers. So these are your diplomats who are representing America abroad. And in addition to that, they had a chance to uh, meet with small businesses in China and also big businesses like Xiamen um, Airlines, which is one of the top airlines in China. Uh, they had a tour to facilities and they talked to management, uh, to their leaders. So. Uh, it's leadership development that they're getting from Millennium Envoys, um, something that there that is not seen uh, throughout uh, America. Uh, as far as who we're looking for, we look for people in diverse backgrounds, uh, low low income, middle, uh, high. Uh, you know, we try to be flexible uh, to to whatever student that we're working with. Uh, so we welcome all. All you have to do is just send me an email. Uh, so my email is danny at millenniumunvoice.com. Uh, and I look forward to hearing from anyone. Excellent. Yeah, you have a very positive vibe around the things you're saying and the things I know that you're doing. Uh, very briefly, the 20 students that you took to Xiamen, were they in high school? Were they in college? About what age group were they? So um, the students that I took to Shaman, they were in high school, um, age range from uh, 13 to 17. And uh, they were Baltimore City high school students. So I helped them raise about $30,000 uh, for them to go. We went to Shaman and also Beijing. And uh, yeah, so that's what I generally focus on, but we, we've also, I've also worked with middle school students as well. Excellent. Wow. That, that's, that's amazing. That's wonderful. Okay. Um, as we wrap up this interview, I'd just like to ask your personal plans, your business plans with Millennial Envoy in the foreseeable future, where are you planning to go with the things that you're doing? So um, I have, been um, in contact with a number of or international organizations, uh, whether it's dealing with um, people of color um, that are in the international space. Uh, and so I'm, you know, I'm planning to also work with young professionals and uh, putting together a delegation to go to China, specifically China, uh, where they can interact with 
uh, leading professional, you know, young professionals and also the government there to create um, business partnerships. Um, and that's something that I think that hasn't been done yet. So we try to uh, bring a new trend. Uh, you know, we try to create trendsetters. Uh, in addition to that, uh, with high school students, I want to do, uh, well, we're planning to put together a Asian trip. So this will be um, taking students to South Korea, um, Japan, and China. So how we're able to do this is because, you know, we do have connections abroad, uh, whether it's with businesses and also um, government, government officials that work in the different cities. Uh, for example, with Shaman, you know, we, we have good partnerships there, um, Beijing, uh, Tokyo. So, you know, we look forward um, to what we're planning and hopefully when um, COVID dies down, uh, our objective, you know, we have plans to at least send 30, 30 students to China, uh, Japan, and also South Korea. And this will be nationwide. So it won't, we won't particularly focus on a specific area um, in the United States. And then with uh, young professionals, you know, we want to have a, a wide range of professionals. You know, it doesn't matter which industry they're in. Um, you know, we would like to connect with them and see what we can do uh, with the partners that we have. Uh, we're trying to explore opportunities abroad. Excellent. Yeah. Um, some of the things you said just now are totally new ideas to me. I mean, someone in high school going all the way to China and raising that amount of capital. What you've accomplished up to now is phenomenal. I'm very proud of you. And I'm going to share this with as many people as I can because that's this is definitely something that will benefit our young people going into the future. Okay, um, last thing, any final thoughts, anything else that you wanna share with us? Uh, well, I'll definitely have the links to everything that you've given me already in the comments, posted to the website. Is there anything finally that you would like to share? Um, my, my final words is that, um, you know, in order for me to be successful, um, as far as with Million Mom Boys and also my personal commitment, because I do have a personal commitment with the things that I do in Asia, because of all the experiences that I have in um, China, Japan, and also South Korea, um, I have to make others successful, whether you're in high school, middle school, a uh, young professional, you know, we're going to seek whatever we can um, to uh, basically fulfill your needs and bring new experiences to your life um, that can uh, that can achieve your goals, uh, that can broaden your horizon uh, to opportunities that you never thought were out there, uh, because that has happened to me, and I want to bring the same experiences to others. Okay, excellent. And we appreciate you doing that. All right, Danny Evans, who's the founder of Millennium Envoys. Thank you very much, Mr. Evans, Black Asia Magazine. Peace. Thank you very much. I appreciate you. Take care. Uh -huh.